So when I started my research uh, 25 years ago, the question was very simple. If the deuterium concentration is, okay, if the deuterium concentration in a human uh, body is 12, 40 millimole, and comparing with the calcium level, which is only 2.5 and one millimole of the magnesium, the question is whether the deuterium has any role in living organs or not. Uh, the primary focus was the cancer. For several years, we were focusing on cancer research, but I was very shocked when people with the cancer and diabetes came back and said that his blood sugar level went down, and I didn't believe it. But then another people came to us and said that his blood sugar level became better and lower. So we decided to, to run a study. Uh, at the university, we took a, a rat model system. We treated the mice, uh, rat with a streptozotoxin. The rat became diabetic. And after uh, two weeks after the treatment, uh, we started the experiment. In the very first experiment, we treated the rats with normal water and water with 25 ppm. We found that the healthy rats, the blood sugar level was low. Those diabetic rats, which received only deuterium depleted water or normal water, the blood sugar level was high. But when the rats received insulin plus deuterium depleted water with 25 ppm, then we could reduce drastically the blood sugar level. So that was quite promising. In the next experiment, uh, we tested the rats with 25, 75, 105, and 125 ppm deuterium depleted water. And the surprising result was that not the lowest D level reduced the best way, the blood sugar level, but the 125 ppm was the most effective. That was a little bit surprising. Okay, so we ran the third experiment when we changed the D concentration with 5 ppm between 125 and 150, and we could say that the optimum concentration was 125 and 140 ppm. This would be the summary of the three experiment, and we could see that range is the most effective to reduce the blood sugar level. We checked the fructose amine, which shows the blood sugar level in the last average of last three weeks. Here, okay, here again, okay. Here again, here was the optimum, and we also, of course, we checked the hemoglobin A1C, and again, uh, that was the best range to, to reduce the blood sugar level. For those who are not familiar with that, how can the cells take up the glucose? It's typically used the GLUT4 system. The GLUT4 is stored in the cytosol, and when the insulin binds to the receptor, the signal system will trigger the mechanism that the GLUT4 compartment should move to the membrane, and there is the excess cytosis, so the GLUT4 protein appear in the membrane, and the cells can take up the glucose from the uh, bloodstream. So this is the reason that we checked whether the deuterium depleted water can modify and increase or uh, change the GLUT4 concentration in the membrane of the muscle. Uh, these two bars shows that in the healthy animals, independently whether they consume normal water or deuterium depleted water, the GLUT4 concentration was high in the uh, uh, muscle membrane. But when we checked the uh, diabetic rats, the lowest was in the normal water and the highest was at 125 ppm. So we could say that one way that we could reduce the blood sugar level in the rats the reason was that the deuterium depleted water sensitized the, the signal transport system, which stimulated the translocation of GLUT4 to the membrane, and the cells could take up uh, the deuterium. Based upon this, so these are the, the conclusion of this part of the uh, study. So deuterium depleted water can reduce the blood sugar when there is insulin. We stimulated the GLUT4 translocation and that was the optimum concentration uh, to reduce the blood sugar level. So based upon this uh, preclinical study, we ran a human study. In that study, we screened 42 patients, and finally we enrolled 30. Uh, 11 was uh, impaired fasting glucose, 10 uh, uh, impaired glucose tolerance, 9 uh, was diabetes. Uh, all these patients consume 1.100 ppm 
duty in depleted water. Everybody consumed 1.5 liter per day, and that lasted for 90 days. Uh, that was the screening. On day zero and day 90, we checked several parameters of the blood. We made a, a clamp system to measure the insulin resistance. We took a, a blood sample, but, but we repeated every second weeks. So we tried to collect as much data as possible. Here are deutium concentration was measured, liver-related enzymes, kidney-related cations, and blood counts was, was followed uh, during the three-month study. We measured when somebody is consuming deutium depleted water, we can reduce the deconcentration in the blood. Uh, it means from 147, it went down to 133. Uh, we checked the changes of the deconcentration patient by patient, and we could say that at the beginning, the deconcentration was 146 and 150, and at the end of the three-month study, it was 125 and 143. There was one patient, here there was only four, four ppm reduction in the deconcentration. He, he was a man, I'm very sure he was consuming beer at the same time, uh, parallel with deutium depleted water. Uh, which was a little bit surprising, but, but we were very happy with that results, that the consumption of deutium depleted water slightly increased the blood count in this pa patient, uh, white blood, red blood hemoglobin, and reduce the eosinophil cell numbers. Uh, we are happy with that because we see when cancer patients receiving a chemotherapy and consuming deutium depleted water, they regularly can receive the chemotherapy because somehow deutium depleted water can protect against the side effect and toxic effect, uh, the chemotherapic agent. We also found, and that was very surprising, that the HDL, the good cholesterol concentration, increased in that population. And, and you know, no any drug to increase the HDL concentration in human body. Uh, the other very important finding was that significantly we could reduce the sodium concentration in the blood. The point is that we checked about six different parameters of the blood, but that was the only parameters which moved in the same direction in 90% of the population. And I will side this side on my last uh, talk, what I will keep on afternoon. Uh, and of course, one of the primary aims was whether we can modify the, the, the fasting glucose level. And we could say that at the beginning it was uh, 6.07 and it was 5.74 at the, at the 19 days. So we could say we could significantly reduce the uh, fasting glucose level. You could see there is a big peak at day 60. The question is why is there? Uh, we, we, we say this enrollment of the study started in October. So 60 days later, that was Christmas time. Everybody enjoyed the food, and that was the reason we say that they increased up the blood sugar level. So we, we, we think that that number should be even lower if we start the clinical trial not close to the Christmas time. We, we know that we're talking about insulin resistance when the insulin is present, but somehow the, the receptors cannot communicate with the insulin and no real signal system. So even the insulin is there, the glucose is there, the cells are starving, and one of the primary aims to reduce somehow the insulin resistance and that way to reduce the blood sugar level. And uh, that was what we are trying to prove with that study. Uh, and we found that the, the 30 population, we couldn't say that we could reduce significantly or we can increase the glucose uptake of the body because uh, we could check finally in 29 patients, not one patient, patient we cannot uh, repeat the study at the, at the end of the study. Uh, so finally we could say, considering a 29 patient, we cannot uh, say that significantly can increase the glucose uptake of the body. But when we checked how the glucose uptake changed in the patient, patient by patient, we found that uh, finally in 11 patients, we could reduce the insulin resistance. 
And the question was, why just that 11 patient we could modify and increase the, the, the growth uptake of this patient? And checking, and it means that considering these 11 patients, uh, in that case, the glucose uptake was increased up from 6.9 uh, milligram per body weight per minute to up to 8.6 uh, milligram per body weight per minute, which was quite significant. But the question was, why just this, this 11 patient uh, was that changes? And considering all the parameters, there was only two which could be related with these results. So those where we reduced the insulin resistance, the HDL level was high at the beginning, and it was still high at the end of the third month, and the sodium level was low, and it was even lower at the end of the third month. Those group of patients, which was uh, 18, the HDR was below the normal value. It was extremely low, although it increased very sharply with 50%, and the sodium level was pretty high, but it decreased. If I would start again this clinical trial, it would last it not for three months, but for six months or even lower. This is, we have prepared our next uh, protocol for, to test the effect of deuterium depleted for diabetes that will be ex expanded to, to six months. Because I would say that uh, after three or four months, we, we may have seen that other people, we could increase the, or decrease the, the insulin resistance because there was a big change in, in, in the HDR concentration and the sodium concentration. So, so far our plan is to, to start a new clinical trial based upon this preliminary uh, phase two clinical trials. And one of the focus will be whether is there any connection with the HDR concentration and uh, insulin resistance. And the question is in which parameter help the duty inhibited water to, to, to improve the, the the insulin resistance of, or reduce the insulin resistance of this patient. So, conclusion, in a preclinical study, we proved that deuterium depleted water decreased the, decreased the serum glucose concentration. Uh, the 30 patient uh, in an open label study showed that we could reduce the serum deuterium level. We increased the HDL concentration. We significantly increased the sodium concentration. And in 11 cases, we could drastically uh, uh, reduce the insulin resistance. Uh, yes, uh, uh, and uh, the study confirmed that uh, the deuterium has on, not only role in the tumor development, but it may have a very important role in, in metabolic diseases. I left out my slide, which was a question from Dominic. We also found that 50% of this population, we significantly could reduce the insulin concentration. And that also correlated with the HDL and sodium level uh, of, the, of the patient. So thank you for your attention.